Imagine a world where robots not only think, but also feel like humans. With bionic skin, they might remind you to grab a sweater when temperatures drop and feel the difference between a plastic plate or a ceramic one when doing the dishes. From a self-preservation standpoint, they'd even be able to detect punctures or cuts in their skin and could in theory even feel pain. For example, in Japan, scientists recently made an astonishing breakthrough in September 2024 when they grafted living human skin tissues onto a robot's face. More impressively, they were able to manipulate the pink fleshy material to create a smile, making the robot appear more friendly to onlookers. On the surface, it may not sound like much, considering we've seen robots like Amica and Sophia display a wide range of emotions. However, what makes this experiment stand out is that the team, led by Professor Shoji Takeuchi at the University of Tokyo's Biohybrid Systems Laboratory, was able to perfectly transfer living tissue from a petri dish to a humanoid robot without bunching it up or tearing it in the process. After all, the biological process behind preserving the integrity of human skin is a lot more complex than many of us realize. Under normal circumstances, your skin stays attached to your face because a complex system of connective tissues, mostly collagen and elastin, anchors it to the underlying muscles and bones. These proteins make the skin flexible enough to move when we laugh, frown, or show other expressions, and despite stretching in multiple ways, it's tough enough not to tear. Once you take it out of its element, it becomes difficult to maintain skin cells without an active circulatory, respiratory, and digestive system keeping them alive. Of course, Professor Takeuchi and his team experienced this problem firsthand while spending years in development. But every time they thought they'd cracked the code of artificial living skin, they always came up short as it got damaged during the transplant. So how exactly did they pull it off this time? Well, the team had to take a closer look at human anatomy and try to replicate that. With that in mind, the researchers had to improvise with a special collagen gel to make the fake skin tissue stick on, and specially made V-shaped perforations that mimicked ligaments and could anchor the skin to the underlying metal. This innovation allowed them to successfully graft living skin onto a 2D robot's face and use actuators to shape its movements. The result was a pink, fleshy-looking blob with glass eyes and a smile. In future projects, Takeuchi's team hopes to create more complex skin that incorporates additional structures like muscles, sweat glands, pores, blood vessels, and even nerves. But with those additional components, AI robots with such bionic skin could do more than express human emotions. They could potentially heal themselves. Besides creating skin that robots could use to express joy, sadness, or anger, Professor Takeuchi and his team of scientists at Tokyo University are also looking at creating self-healing skin. To that end, they pooled their knowledge of robotics and tissue culturing together to create a robot finger covered with living skin tissue in 2022. Just like the smiling robot, this robotic digit had living cells. However, thanks to the additions of cells like fibroblasts and keratinocytes, the skin also has the ability to heal itself from damage such as deep wounds and burns. As Takeuchi put it, the silicone rubber covers that are commonly used in robotics may look real from a distance or in photos and videos, but when you actually get up close, you realize that it is artificial. We think that the only way to achieve an appearance that can be mistaken for a human being is to cover it with the same material. So who knows, in a couple of years we may not be able to tell the difference between a human and a robot. Also, once this innovation goes mainstream, robots will not only be able to feel like we do, they'll be able to recover from minor damages, ultimately improving their durability. For example, a robot working in an automobile workshop may sustain damage after lifting a heavy object or piercing its skin on a machine. But rather than become an unsightly scar, after detecting the tear, the robot's skin could put itself back together and heal just like you would after scraping your knee. As remarkable as that technology is, it would further blur the line between what humans and robots can do. 
Speaking of blurring the lines, Hiroshi Ishiguro, a Japanese roboticist, got a lot of praise in 2006 when he created an android copy of himself. He dubbed his AI-powered robot twin the Geminoid HI-1, and with the same jet black human hair and flesh-colored silicone skin, the two were nearly identical. Besides its lifelike appearance, another thing that made the android remarkable was its ability to mimic the same voice and head movements of Ishiguro. In a video with his android twin, Ishiguro talked about how his team's ongoing work to transmit human presence to the Geminoid HI-1 would help them better understand humans. Well, I think it's safe to say they did a good job, because in another video where a fellow researcher was poking the robot in the face, it replied irritatedly, why are you doing that? And after the poking continued, it said firmly, no, 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 don't do that. As impressive as that was for a robot in 2006, Ishiguro and his team continued to push the boundaries of realistic humanoid robots with the Geminoid HI-6. And in case you're asking yourself, six? Yes, the inventor did create six identical robots of himself, with each version getting more advanced than the previous ones. As the latest in the series, the Geminoid HI-6 beats the others in terms of realism as it has the closest resemblance to date. Besides having a more lifelike appearance, the robot is also able to help its creator in class. In an interview with CNBC, Ishiguro talked about how the main feature of this humanoid robot was its ability to converse. He then went on to explain how thanks to a larger language model, the Geminoid HI-6 is able to coherently answer questions from the audience after a lecture. That means cartoonish depictions of the future with boxy and metallic robot teachers, like the one in the Jetsons, would most likely be incorrect. When we have robot lecturers, from elementary classrooms to college lecture halls, they'll probably look exactly like us. And they won't be restricted to just teaching. The proclaimed father of humanoids, Ishiguro, is also the brains behind other hyper-realistic robots, including the female android robot Erica that can act as a receptionist and autonomously interact with customers. If you want to find out about her and other amazing female robots, I've got a video on that too. But how do you feel about creating robots in our likeness? Do you think we could ever get to the point where we can't distinguish between real people and AI humanoids? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As impressive as bionic skin is, AI imitating human anatomy isn't just skin deep. Clone Robotics recently made headlines when they launched a prototype, aptly named Proto-Clone, of a humanoid with musculoskeletal functions. But what if I told you they already have a full-scale humanoid robot with synthetic organs and artificial muscles? That's right, beyond flesh and bones, scientists can now replicate human anatomy internally to a startling degree with biomimetic systems that allow for more lifelike and fluid movements. On the outside, the robot has a musculoskeletal structure similar to ours with 206 artificial bones. Impressively, it also boasts of 164 points of articulation in its upper body alone, a clear testament to its advanced design. For context, the average human has 40 to 50 joints in their upper body, potentially demonstrating that Clone Alpha has greater flexibility. Of course, all these bones wouldn't be of much use without muscles, and to that end, Clone Robotics created several artificial muscles powered by a water-based hydraulic system. This biomimetic system gives Clone Alpha the ability to replicate human movement with startling fluidity that's uncharacteristic of other humanoid robots, including some of the more advanced bots making waves in the industry like Optimus. By swapping our rigid actuators and motors for soft, water-powered artificial muscles, the myofibers can contract and relax in a similar fashion to human muscles. These synthetic muscles even give the robot's arms and legs a veined appearance as they peek beneath the surface. And to make it all happen, the Clone Alpha uses a hydraulic pump similar to a human heart that circulates fluid through the robot's vascular system. Basically, this pump operates at 500 watts, providing the necessary power to drive the myofibers and enable Clone Alpha's fluid motions. 
It also incorporates AquaJet valve technology in its hydraulic system, which controls the complex network of valves within the robot and ensures precise control of the hydraulic fluid. Clone Alpha's nervous system is just as impressive as its vascular system. With four depth cameras, 70 inertial sensors, and 320 pressure sensors for real-time feedback, this humanoid bot can respond nearly instantly. It runs on Clone Robotics' latest CyberNet model, and this advanced chip acts similar to the human brain, allowing the robot to process visual feedback and exercise accurate proprioceptive abilities. In other words, Clone Alpha can tell exactly where its limbs are in space. Naturally, these features contribute to the AI's human-like movement and reflexes with muscles that contract in less than 50 milliseconds. Clone Alpha's similarity to humans is almost eerie when you compare the humanoid's internal system to that of a human, making it the perfect example of engineering meeting biology. In case you're wondering why it's even necessary for robots to have a sense of touch, scientists working on such projects actually have good intentions behind it. After all, it's easy to think these are simply superfluous experiments to try and play God. But if you really think about it, integrating bionic skin with advanced AI can make robots better at helping us. A robot that can easily tell the difference between how much pressure it needs to hold a carrot or a banana would be a better assistant in the kitchen. It would also make our interactions with them more natural, and the ability to differentiate between temperatures could even help them know when you're running a fever. Beyond the home, with the added ability of touch, they'd also make fewer mistakes in assembly lines or in warehouses. So ultimately, creating bionic skin for AI isn't just a vanity project, it's an attempt to make them more efficient. Another benefit of bionic skin is that it would enable robots to convey their emotions through facial expressions. While they may not have feelings of their own, they could easily mirror the users, creating a sense of comfort when you feel down or cheering you on when you're celebrating. Their ability to display empathy, even with the smallest movements, would take hyperrealism to the next level, especially in social settings. For example, they could act as companions for the sick and elderly, greatly improving their mental health. They could also play a role in aiding our physical health, too. For example, in hospitals that are short-staffed, they could offer physical assistance to patients with mobility issues, helping to transfer them safely from one location to the next. Their bionic skin would also create a feeling of warmth and safety that would be far less jarring than a cold metallic frame. That means they'd be able to provide both physical and emotional comfort. Besides, since we can design these humanoid robots with exceptional strength, it would also be less of a physical burden to the health workers present. Japan is already enlisting humanoid robot nurses in their healthcare facilities, like Grace, to check vital signs and interact with patients. But that raises some ethical questions about what our world would look like if we couldn't distinguish between humans and robots. After all, with skin like ours and a skeletal system with all the fluidity of a real person, how would you truly know you were talking to a human? In that scenario, real humans might get the shorter end of the stick as their robotic counterparts move up the ranks. Not only because they could be cheaper, but because without real emotions, a humanoid would never snap at a customer, raise their voice at a patient, or complain about being tired. They'd have all the experience of being human without any of the accompanying stressors. Despite these legitimate concerns, it's more likely that any legislation against humanoid technology might be medicine after poison. After all, with Clone Robotics already set to manufacture and deliver 279 units of their limited edition Clone Alpha, it's obvious our laws would most likely have to play catch up when the damage is done. While the development of bionic skin is still a couple years from mainstream application, it's both fascinating and terrifying to think of how much progress they could make. For now, the goal might be for their sensory feedback to be on par with ours, but with time, their ability to differentiate between temperature, pain, and texture could exceed ours. They're also bound to improve in terms of their facial expression, and who knows, AI might one day be capable of giving us the side eye. With a hyper-realistic face, 
Some of us might even start to fall in love with our AI companions. And with an internal physiology complete with skin and organs like ours, who's to say they would be wrong? How do you think robots with bionic skin would change our relationship with AI? Would it be a net positive or negative? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and please remember to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any AI updates.